Well, earlier, earlier we were hearing from David Bobin about how it's been a big day for Formula 2 racing at Thruxton. We're going to scale things down a little now and look at another major race meeting going on today at Western Shore in Southampton, which, whilst it doesn't boast any Fittipaldis or Watsons, is still being taken every bit as seriously. Gentlemen, start your engine. And as the mechanics make the final adjustments to their cars and the waiting drivers give the engines one final impatient rev, we await the start of one of the day's vital qualifying heats for the European and World Model Car Championships. And it's a clean start and just look at that acceleration. 0-60 in just 50 yards and speed enough to beat a full-size Porsche Turbo in the process. Built to a scale of 1.8, these mighty midgets generate a phenomenal 40,000 revs per minute from their 3.5cc engines. And like the cars, this 310-yard circuit is a purpose-built replica of a real Grand Prix track. Keith Plested is one of the top international drivers, and his haven't based company is the country's number one manufacturer. You've been working on these cars, what, for 12 years now, is it? 12 years, yes. And how much have they developed in that period? Oh, fantastic. They've changed from almost a powered roller skate, flatbed chassis, nothing more than a simple piece of aluminium with four wheels bolted onto them. Now they're a very refined piece of equipment, fully independent suspension, hydraulic shock absorbers, disc brakes, even getting into gear changes now. Now what about the radio control part of it? I mean, how skillful do you have to be to drive one of these cars? Ah, uh, practice. It's a little bit like riding a bicycle, very difficult until you can do it. Uh, a lot of people can then do it, and then of course you get the different levels, certain people, as with all sports, manage to turn out tops, and uh, you get a lot of different levels of driving. What sort of costs are involved? I mean, how much would the, the whole rig cost? Not just the car, but the radio control, the backup materials? You're really talking in the order of about £350 for a basic um, setup that would be suitable to go on to good quality racing. That the British Grand Prix was being held in Southampton this weekend, you probably wouldn't believe me. I didn't. Lee Peck told me. But he says it is, and he's got the details in Coastline. I'm going motor racing. Yeah, that's right. They're 1 8 scale model cars. And the British Grand Prix in question is the first of its kind ever held in the South. It's taken the Southampton Radio Control Car Club a year to organise, and more than a hundred competitors from all over Europe, including an entrant from, would you believe, Australia, are taking part. Cars are cars all over the world. Cars are cars all over the world. Engine in the front, jack in the back. Wheels take the front, pinion and a rack. This is the pit. And it's here that the cars are set up to perfection. And during Sunday afternoon's 45-minute final, there'll be stops for fuel and tyre changes. The engines may be small, just 3.5 cc's, but they catapult the cars to a top speed of 80 miles an hour. The cars are made at PB Racing of Havant, pioneers of the sport in this country. It began in America. So, how much does it cost? Well, second-hand kit, controller and car, can be picked up for about £150. New gear, £300. See them racing after some more events in the south. That's the British Model Grand Prix tomorrow and Sunday in Southampton. A winner is guaranteed. Woolston, on the banks of Southampton Water, just across from the Folio refinery, may not be the most glamorous setting for a major motor racing event. 
but many of the big wheels from the small world of model motor racing were there. 90 competitors took part, including Britain's top drivers and several European champions. The course in the final race is over 30 miles, and it's designed as a supreme test of man and machine. The cars are one-eighth the size of real racing cars, which can out-accelerate an E-Type, and when they crash, it's as spectacular as a real thing. Some of the competitors have come a long way to take part. What do you think your chances are? Well, they were quite reasonable. Um, we just got beaten then in the semi-final, but that's the way it goes. I mean, we did better really than what we expected. Is it really worth coming all this way just to race around a little track like this? Oh, yeah, well, it's, I mean, the people over here, you meet them, it's quite nice and the competition's good. And it's good, it's good for your driving as well. I mean, you improve because the competition's different. The race organiser was Paul Landells. Paul, a lot of people will think you're just grown men playing with toys here. Yeah, it's, that's a fair comment, actually. Um, if you take the body shell off, though, you'll find that they're quite a sophisticated piece of engineering. Each car has independent suspension on all four wheels, anti-roll bars that can go on and on and on. Very sophisticated. You seem to be trying to make this like the real thing, a real Grand Prix. It is. I think we've learnt lessons from the real thing. You'll find in the main final today that the cars will actually be stopping for fuel at critical points during the race, and they'll also be stopping for a tyre change as well. Obviously, the softer compound tyres do wear out, um, so they'll be stopping to change tyres maybe twice, three times. It's very, very competitive. Uh, we spend a lot of money and time on our cars, and we take it very, very seriously. And is there any danger in the sport? The dangers are fairly small, to be honest. You'll notice today that we have a double row of safety fencing for the spectators' viewpoints. Um, obviously, the people involved in the hobby are conscious of the, of the dangers. The main one is radio interference. That affects the car in all sorts of strange ways. And obviously, if it disappears at 50 miles an hour, it may cause a little bit of damage to itself and perhaps a person. Um, it happens very, very rarely, though, thank goodness. Britain is a leading manufacturer of radio-controlled model racing cars, and many of them are built at Havant. They can cost more than £200, with a further £100 for the radio. There's no age limit, and you don't need a driving licence, and their top speed is around 80 miles an hour. Each car carries about a quarter of a pint of fuel. It'll only last five or six minutes, so refuelling and wheel changing is a major operation, and is carried out in much the same way as the real thing except that lifting the cars is a lot easier. One of the leading contenders was Debbie Preston. She's the daughter of a real racing driver. Her car built in Havant clocked up the best time during races leading up to the final. But even for her, a slip of the finger could mean a bad manoeuvre and lost time. And at the end of it all, after more than 130 laps, the prizes. Not money, only trophies. Debbie had led the field for much of the race, but was eventually beaten into second place. However, she may still have a chance to be selected for the World Championships in Japan next year when she could face the really big wheels of the model.